I'll have the monkish to go with my shame. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Craft Beer Republic. You made it. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for joining. I am Greg. I am being joined by, well, this is the ultimate question. Who better than Flex? Nobody. Flex, how's it going? How's, wow, how's it going? Singular. Roses are red, violets are blue, and Flex is in the house. <laughs> and I love you. It's a haiku or something. Feeling good, <laughs> yeah. Greg. Feeling real good today. You're very artsy. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. You're a poet and you didn't know it. No, I didn't. And joining me in house <laughs> tonight is so much better than average, Coley. Coley. Hi. Yes. I wish I had. I always try to like think I'm gonna say something cool like flex, and then I get here and I'm like, uh, and I don't have anything cool to say. The fact that you thought that was cool makes me feel awesome. Because that was well, like I'm that was like a seven pleased. second thought on a whim. I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. We're just gonna go with it. I like it, I'm though. Impressed. You always say something new and fun every time, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to say something new and fun, and then I forget about it, and then I'm put on the spot, and I'm like, oh, I freeze up. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, uh, like, as uh, the guy. I'm Coley. Uh, 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 <laughs> deer in the head like uh, Coley. That's what I should be. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I always figure it's like the guy who puts the show together, I should be able to come up with something funny at the beginning, and then every time I hit the music, I'm like, well, yeah, I got nothing. We'll, we'll just rely on Flex for this one. <laughs> Flex coming in hot. So, uh, welcome everybody. If you guys maybe have some intros that I could use, send them my way. Mail at craftbeerrepublic. Send them to Greg, please. I need all the help. Make me look better than Flex. It's <laughs> gonna take a whole lot of work. How embarrassing for I us. Know. God. You know what? I love Flex, you guys. Yours. I, yeah. I love you guys. We'll just let Flex run the rest of the show. We'll go drink beer or something. Yeah. yeah please uh, don't. F- <laughs> find us across the socials. Craft Beer Republic. Find Flex at Flex Me Beer with underscores in between. And Nicole, find her at Ice Cole, C O L E, beer with underscores after each one. Also, find her on the Booze League podcast. Uh, we have a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. I feel like we haven't all hung out in a while. Uh, we got some ludicrous libation laws, some listener voicemail. Oh, lightning is going crazy outside my window. <laughs> This is rare for California. Yes, weather. We don't get much weather in Southern California. We get none, not at all. Uh, We have an email from a listener, a lot of booze news. So let's crack right into it. I think it's time to answer the ultimate question. In a world where craft beer is king, a world where muscles are bigger than growlers, only one tongue can guide us. One man, one tongue, one tongue jobber. In this world, we must find out... What is Flex drinking? It's so good. Still love it. It gets me every time. <laughs> it ju- so it just puts the biggest smile on my face. Like, my face is going to hurt after this segment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so today, Flex is drinking a uh, really cool beer. Um, it's one of those collaboration beers with, uh, with a message. It is a Brave Noise Pale Ale from Phase mm. 3 Brewing Company. And this is a collaboration with a big goal, a safe and discrimination-free beer industry, which uh, everybody knows, if you haven't been living under a rock, has been a huge, huge theme this year in in the entire craft beer or just beer industry altogether. So um, this one, it doesn't come with any hot bill or anything like that. Uh, It's a 4.5% ABV pale ale. Uh, with this phase three brew, there's only 147 check-ins on untapped and a 379 uh, cumulative rating. And okay. uh, the flavor notes on it, uh, light, citrusy, grassy, bright, and aromatic. I'm going to tell you on, on the nose there, it's a lot of grass, a lot of citrus. Um, it's got a nice bright yellow color, it, it, that straw it's yellow. It's hazy. It's not uh, you know chunky looking. It's very bright. Yeah, it is very bright. Um and now, with, uh, without further ado, the tongue jobber. <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for. One man. <laughs> one jobber. Um, <laughs> super light. They really nailed this one. I mean, you wouldn't really expect anything too thick or creamy at a 4.5%. Um, citrus, grass. It's got a little bit of a, a dry finish to it. Um uh, mm taking a couple sips out here already and it's got that sexy lacing everybody knows that i i love and enjoy 
Um, You're a man after some lacing. That is for right sure. on, right on. Don't give me the lacy panties. Give me the lacy glasses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Noted. But no, for real. I mean, for a beer, you know, for this initiative, I, I, they did an absolutely wonderful job. It was a great beer, great initiative altogether. Uh, really well done. Uh, and I can't stress enough how much that I love these guys, Phase Three Brewing, out of Lake Zurich, Illinois. Yeah, you're you're always rocking the Phase Three, and and very glad that they jumped on that uh, the Brave Noise train. I I've been trying to find some out here. I have not come across any yet, but still looking, and I have faith that I will find at least one or two. Maybe uh, our good pals at Tavor. Oh will yeah, hook us up. Yeah, they <laughs> do carry at uh, Tavor. They do carry some Phase Three uh, brews. I think I've okay. gotten some from there, so that's why it was in my head that maybe right. they and I know Greg's a, you know out. he's he's got the coconut issue but they came out with a, <laughs> a really really awesome piña colada milkshake IPA mm. and it was Ooh. actually like I would put it on like the to die for list wow like I actually, I might literally die from it too well you might actually but uh yeah cuz there's probably I, I pineapple still in it once, too yeah there is <laughs> oh that's a that's a double whammy a I'm out. like explosive tongue jobber for Greg <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to hear about how good it is. All right. Well, I'll sniff it. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for he that. He said. Well, <laughs> very nice. Hopefully, uh, we can find some of those brave noises out here. And, and like you said, Tavor. Look for Tavor. Now I'm going to start Googling on Tavor and see if I can find it. All right. A lot to get to. A lot to talk about. First of all, I want to mention, if you missed last week, I interviewed Jack Dyer, founder and CEO of Topa Topa Brewing. So please go back and have a listen. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Jack and have been trying to get him on the show for some time now. So uh, go have a listen to Batch 271. Also, Batch 270, go back and listen to that if you haven't heard that. I feel like it's just like a play. Now, go back to listen to 269 and 268. Uh, no, 270, we had Beer Girl Melissa on the show, and that was a lot of fun as well. And uh, in case anybody missed it, that was the episode where Flex was forced to drink some pumpkin spice seltzers. Yeah, that was, that was the one show I was kind of hoping everybody would miss. And it seems like everybody that I know actually tuned into that one. So I just want to say, hey, thanks yeah. a lot, everybody, for uh, for putting up with that. That's per- Now, the real question is, have you finished the rest of that box that she sent you of seltzers? Uh, no. So uh, I want to say like, like four total, right? Yeah, it should be four total. So I did chug the apple crisp one the next day because I owed a fantasy football chug. And that mm-hmm. one was, again, it was god awful. Uh, it I'm smelled sure. just like the pumpkin spice. It smelled really good. It smelled just like apple cider. Like a candle. And then, yeah. It, <laughs> th- I think they nailed it with Yankee Candle. They got some kind of fucking contract with them. Uh, and then I chugged it, and it was atrocious, and I gagged, <laughs> and it was second worst to the pumpkin spice. So I mm. still have the maple pear, which is a horrible combination. Oh. And yeah. I have. The I love m- pear, but... And I have the marshmallow, That's horrible marshmallow cream or whatever the the hell it Ugh. is. Yeah. So good news though, I, I have, have to do goosebumps. A, I have to do another Just... fantasy football chug for losing tomorrow. So I'll. I don't know, oh shit! The... That remind I owe you a chug. You do owe me a chug, but Fuck, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna hold Packers. you to it. Yeah. Uh, oh no, hold me to it. I I owe you a chug. I'm I'm not gonna be like uh, other people we know in this room. Oh. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> I've been making a lot of chug bets lately, so if anybody wants to go ahead and make a chug bet with me about a Packers game, uh, I'm right here. Just, you know, send us a DM, email us, whatever. Uh, I got Tread, who owed me a chug already for beating the Steelers yesterday. Okay. You owe me a chug for last week. <sighs> the Niners. So let's keep I, keep keep on the I chug bets. I, let's go. You should have bet them the first week when I, so I was Saints say, kicked their I, ass. I, yeah, we kicked your ass the first week, but that's okay. But then we won't talk about the rest of the Saints' performance. Yeah. It's... Congrats, Giants. <laughs> First win of the season. Yeah, disappointing. Yeah. So, um, well, what Flex didn't know is we're going to play Will Flex Chug It. I'm oh, just kidding. That would be really fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I hope you post videos of every time you drink those, because they're fantastic. I will. You check my stories. I'll, I'll, t- I'll tag the Craft Beer Republic now. I'm always checking your stories. Um, all right, moving on. Also want to mention we have some new merch up on the website. We got some uh, stay hydrated shirts. I got the uh, fancy craft beer republic glass that I'm drinking out of right now. Uh, we have a couple of drink local shirts, one for Wisconsin for the Wisco kid and one for California. Go check those out. 
Um, yeah, craftbeerrepublic.com. Click on store and uh, you know check out our merch. Lots of stuff on there. It's really cute stuff too. Thank like you. the girls' tank is really cute. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'll be ordering right after I do my beer chug. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I really am. I really am going to order. I think you can do your really chug. In oh, the I thought you said. Sure. Just I think ki- I, I thought you. I thought you were going to say just kidding. I'm really going to do my chug. <laughs> <laughs> well, we. I think this weekend we decided it was Old English. Yeah, we we actually had a or meeting Ice of the House. minds. Yeah. yeah, we we sat down with Wiley at uh, the 14 Cannons, which I was going to get to next. 14 Cannons had their uh, anniversary, fourth anniversary of the weekend. They had their fourth anniversary IPA, which was phenomenal. Great. We, uh, the three of us, well, I say three of us, not Flex, my wife <laughs> and Nicole and I uh, <laughs> went over and, and we hung out with uh, the commissioner of the Booze League, had the IPA, saw Michael Voltaggio, if anybody's into the Food Network. That was kind of cool. Hung out with uh, Nick, the brewer, talked to him a little bit. But yeah, we had a meeting of the minds. We're talking about how we there's just no way we're gonna get old Milwaukee out here, and we're not gonna have flex waste shipping on old Milwaukee. It's that should be double against the law. So uh, I think we've decided on old E or or Natty Ice. Those were the two that were going back yeah, and forth. You said Natty Ice was like the worst rated. So I mean, whatever I can find. Yeah, I looked at worst beers in in America, and number one was old it's Milwaukee. Just, I you know or Milwaukee's best. I honestly think the worst part about this bet in in general, which you should feel for losing, is the shame (laughs) that I am going to feel walking up to a counter (laughs) fucking paying for this garbage. The shame that they're like, who is this bitch is drinking Ice House or like Colt 45 or whatever, whatever we just old English. Natty Ice. yeah, Natty Ice. Like, well, you you just have to put like a, a four pack of craft beer next to it to like really confuse them. Oh, like, yeah. Make and then them they look at it and I'm like, it was a bet. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. I just, oh, I'll, I'll take this three pack of tall boys and, uh, oh, you guys have some monkish. Great. Yeah. I'll have the monkish to go with my shame. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'll take some hazies with a side of shame, please. Yeah. So just put it on the Booze League tab. Oh, well, of course. Don't you have a company card? <laughs> yeah, I should. Yeah. You kind of hope the cashier will just moments. feel bad enough for you that he'll just kind of like let you walk away with the ice house or something. It's <laughs> right. like. It'd be better yeah. if uh, the the cashier person puts it in one of those black plastic bags like you used to get porn in, mm-hmm. you know, so it like is really <laughs> shameful. So no one can see what I got. But everybody knows what you got because it's in a black plastic bag. So embarrassing. I uh. think this is the worst part about losing. It's not even that I have to chug this horrendous beer. <laughs> it's the shame of buying it in public. It, ugh. God. Make sure you wear your booze league shirt while you're buying it. Oh, I yes. will. Please. And hopefully somebody can video you. I think oh, I'm we can sure make we could that arrange happen. that, yeah. yeah. I'm sure her husband would love to embarrass her. Oh, right on, Nick. Yeah. Right on, dude. Let's yeah. do <laughs> Yeah, BDN's all about embarrassing his wife. So, um, Oh, I wanted to mention that we made number 80 on the Apple podcast charts last week, which was yeah, kind of cool. That's super big news. What? Yeah. That's in incredible. our In our category, which I looked up, it was something like 13,000 podcasts, and we hit number 80, and I was like, holy shit, that's pretty sweet. Top 100. So. What was a... Uh... What was mine? <laughs> you know, I just <laughs> I have to I have to ask. You knew that was coming because I'm so narcissistic. I just get emails. I get oh, updates. Okay, of okay. just mine. Sure. So yeah, um, I block yeah. anything. This is Booze League on it. Mm. Yeah, as you but should. Yeah, thank yeah. thank you to everybody out there who listens. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Num- number crazy. one, because that, that's I mean, think about it. Eighty out of over thirteen thousand podcasts in this yeah. genre. That's I mean, th- that's fucking amazing. It was pretty cool to see, to wake up to in my, my inbox. So thanks for, yeah, thanks to everybody who listened. Uh, I, I give credit to Flex's seltzer chugs. I think that's what, what did it for us, what put us over the line and, there. And if, if that's what's going to do it, Greg, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm to chug me some seltzers, man. Are you here for it? I am here for it. Or as we like to say, <laughs> beer for it. I'm beer for you, Coley. Thank you. Oh. hey It's getting hot in here. <laughs> what else? Oh, Naughty Pine. Oh, yes. So locally, brand new brewery opened. Our friend Britt, Brewer Britt on the gram, opened up Naughty Pine. That's naughty like, you know, you're so naughty. Naughty Pine Brewery. <laughs> well, not like naughty like the tree. Um, and we stopped in. <laughs> the wife and I stopped in the day after she opened last Sunday. And then all of us got to go over the weekend and check them out. And uh, I'm I'm beer for it. Um, their beers are incredible. Britt is so talented. Yeah. Um, they're amber. Oh yeah. Oh, I put down a couple top of top notch. Mm-hmm. So good, and even their IPA and uh, was really good. Everything's really crushable. Mm-hmm. Fairly low ABV, just solid. And I love to know that there's a female 
owner brewer like out owner brewer yep. just killing it i really hope i think they're one of the best breweries now in ventura county yeah that's a, that's a mighty strong words right there and for anybody that's local or semi-local has heard of integrin she comes from brewing at integrin so you know she's she knows what she's doing so and she's there to bring those classic styles and just keep them going you know because isn't that what integrin does is you know they focus on the classic styles yeah, they're a little more German focused. She's a little more wider than that. Okay. Uh, on tap, she had a pills. She had an amber rye, which was fantastic. Um, there was a saison. There was a Belgian double and an IPA. I think that was everything. Yeah. Oh, five beers on tap to open up. So that was pretty good. Um, so yeah, a little more broad. Where Integrin was, you know, ninety nine percent pilsners. So oh, okay. Or lagers, lagers, lagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah. So if anybody's in the you know Ventura County, Northern LA County area, Westlake Village area. Go check her out, Naughty Pine, and uh, find him on the gram as well. What else? Oh, Davis. Our friend Davis sent in an email. Ooh. And part of this has to do with Flex. Uh, is, is this the guy have... who used to bartend in Wisconsin? Yeah, he grew up okay. in Wisconsin. Okay, okay. So so he sent two things. First was a, a, a drunk news story, which was fantastic, and we'll get to that. He goes on to say, uh, in addition, I always think of this weird consequence of a drinking law in Wisconsin when you discuss weird alcohol laws. Years ago, we were at the Lakefront Brewery in Milwaukee, and the beer tender explained that our kids could legally drink in the tap room, but we, as parents, had to order the beer and hand it to them. I'd always known this to be the case from when I grew up there, but wasn't sure if it was still the case. My kids were about 10 and 12 at the time. Anyway, the oldest is now 21, and the youngest is 18. This past summer, I tried to order the (laughs) 18-year-old a beer, and he got carded. I said I was his dad. The bartender said it didn't matter because he was now an adult. This makes sense, but is the, (laughs) but is weird that the both too old and too young to drink legally in Wisconsin. We pretended he was seventeen the rest of the vacation. (laughs) Uh, He also goes on to say that uh, they started planning their trip to uh, Portland and need some brewery suggestions while he's there. So, uh. okay, so to touch on this a little bit, I've never heard of the eighteen-year-old like rule where if you know they're technically an adult you can't serve them because uh-huh. at uh when i was 21 we only had one drinking establishment in the city i live in and as long as my father was present at the bar and it was like he gave permission to the bartender they would legally serve like my so i was 21 but my younger brother was still 19 and with my dad's permission they would serve him drinks that's so wisconsin yeah it's super wisconsin yeah. man. the wisco kid baby right now we get davis has got to get one of those shirts yeah we got to get him a wisco kid shirt. we got to go to crappy click on store mm-hmm. i love i love how um, much uh i love how much this guy can relate to wisconsin it makes me feel uh very cozy yeah <laughs> i love that that's still a law like you guys are just like Fuck it. You want to drink at 16, but your dad says it's cool? Like, go right ahead. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like drinking at home. But I mean, you're with your parents. It's, you know, they're giving you permission. Well, that's the the idea of it. Like, you're with, you know, it's because there's another law. I don't know if it's just here, but if you get married and your significant other isn't of the drinking age, but you have your marriage certificate to prove that, you know, you're like legally wed. Mm-hmm. Then, like the bartender can serve the underage significant other as long as one of them is over twenty one. So they've the the older person in the couple has become like the the parent of sorts and can order of for the younger one. Yeah, the guardian, not parent, but like a guardian. Yeah. That's so funny. It's awesome. Wow, that's yeah, definitely not here. No. Man, they are like <laughs> I'm. I'm probably gonna get carded when I'm buying my old English or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Are you, ma'am, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're 21? Are you sure you want to buy this? Yeah. You must be new at drinking if you're buying this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially because like you're not coming out of some shitty car. You no. Know? Yeah. It's not your 88 Tercel as you as you walk in there. So. <laughs> that is totally true. Yeah. They're like, uh, I you, drive a Tercel. Like- <laughs> 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 oh. So thanks, Davis. If you guys want to send us anything, mail at craftbeerrepublic.com. Uh, love getting those. And I'll, I'm excited to talk about the uh, the drunk news story that he sent us. It is, it is a doozy. Uh, and then the last thing, last little piece of business I want to uncover is that uh, Surf and Suds is this weekend in Ventura, California, October, what is it, like Ninth. the 10th, 9th, mm-hmm. Saturday, the 9th. And uh, 
Everybody go see Coley if you're in the area. Yes, I will be at the Booze League booth slinging all kinds of hats that are actually super cool. Um, yeah. Wiley did a great job designing them. They're real fun. And I don't know. I think we have some new uh, bottle openers that like are metal and thin and mm. fit in your wallet. So come drink all the beer. Come say hi. I'll be signing autographs too. Yeah, she'll <laughs> sign your tits. Don't <laughs> worry. Mm-hmm. Extra dollar for that, but she'll do it either way. It's worth it. Yeah, but bring your own Sharpies. You know, COVID, you don't want to. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll, I have sanitizer and I'll be wearing a mask. Yeah. You don't want to spread the titty germs. <laughs> no, no. The, the titty COVID. That's, uh, that's deadly stuff. <laughs> titty <right there>. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you might find me walking around as well at some point. So. Uh, I'm so excited. I'll, I'll, I'll wear my obnoxiously bright blue stay hydrated shirt. So come say hi. Yeah, too. I was just going to say, make sure you wear the shirt. Yes, I will. I got to clean it because I wore it this weekend too to the anniversary party. So yeah, come uh, come say hi. Go uh, get your tits autographed by Coley. And I'm sure uh, Big Dick Nick will be sleeping somewhere. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> hoping he'll make it for the festival. He might have to work. That's true. Uh, go figure. I mean, all he does is work, but um, yeah. My favorite thing ever, I don't know if I've told this on the show before, is you guys were doing a, a beer festival. I think it was up in like Solvang or Bulletin or whatever. Oh, yeah. And we have friends that live up there. <laughs> and they went and they sent me a picture. It was just of the Booze League booth to say like, <laughs> hey, your friends are here. And it had nothing else, just like, here's the booth. And as I zoomed in... <laughs> There's Nick in the back of the tent, totally dozed off, head down, <laughs> sleeping his ass off while everyone else is slinging merch. And like, if you know Nick, you know that is just that's such a Nick thing. Yeah, he's always tired. That is a hundred percent Nick. So that was that was so perfect. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't get over this. So uh, yeah, well, it was just like the video you guys posted about discussing that some oh whatever God. bottle of beer you were drinking with the video. gravity and yeah. then you're like yeah hey, what do you think and you pan over to nick and he's just zonked out in the chair <laughs> i watch the- i watched that video like a hundred times <laughs> <laughs> well the best part too is like there are times he falls asleep with his head back and i'll start bobbing right and i call it bfc bobbing for cock and i'm like oh nick's about to bfc guys he's about to bfc and you'll see his head bob and I usually draw um, obscene pictures of dicks <laughs> on him and then mm-hmm. cat ears and whiskers every time. Yeah. And I call it Meow Meow Time and I post it to my story because it's there for 24 hours yep. and then it disappears. Dicks and whiskers, dicks and whiskers, dicks and whiskers, dicks and whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's like a techno song. <laughs> the world's worst techno song. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite Nick stories. It happened a couple weekends ago. We were over there, we're, we're drinking our beverages, and Nick once again starts to doze off outside in, in his chair, and Nicole walks in, and just the wife and I outside, and all of a sudden he lets one rip in his sleep, and you can, it'll, it's like a, and we look over, and I shit you not, while still sleeping, eyes closed, he started to smirk. <laughs> he is such a maniac. Oh, it was so good. We were dying, and he never woke up from it. But oh my gosh! But he was happy in his slumber. <laughs> I can't. It's like so embarrassing sometimes <laughs> to be married to him. I love him so much, but damn it! Oh, so good, so he's, so he's good. Definitely my kind of dude. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta hang out so Flex and Nick can fart together in, in sleep. our sleep. Yeah, and be yeah. real proud about it. Yeah. Oh, that would be cute. So, so It'd be cute. like that Friends episode when Joey and Ross, you know, have the best nap ever, you know, cuddling together on the couch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that could be me and Nick. I'm just saying. I I, I can picture that. <laughs> yeah, I can too. <laughs> Nick gets real sweepy. It's usually Marty is yeah. his cuddle buddy. Marty the brew pup. But yeah, he does love uh, some some nap time. That's for sure. Um. All right. Very good. Let's see. Before we talk about, well, fuck it. Are you thirsty? I am dehydrated. I feel like we've been talking for a while. My mouth is getting dry. Let's crack into some fucking beer with an eye. Beer with an eye, everybody. Why the fuck not? Uh, we, we are drinking... From Ale Smith Brewing down there in San Diego. This is Ale Schmidt Oktoberfest. It's a Marzen. It is 5.5%, has 13 IBUs, has a 3.7 untapped and an 87 on Beer Advocate. I figure it's October. Time for some Marzens. They say, this classic German-style amber lager has been brewed in Germany and Austria for hundreds of years. Though it was made famous for being served at Munich's Oktoberfest celebration since 1872. 
Modern versions exported to the U.S. are often labeled Oktoberfest, and the name has become synonymous in the minds of most brewers and consumers with the traditional Märzen style. Though modern iterations of the style in Europe are considerably lighter, our take on this classic is characterized by a clean, elegant, and toasty malt character. Prost! And I, uh, I usually find this one just about every year. This it's, one is good. It's hearty. It's delicious. You know, and I'm going to keep my eyes open because we do get Alesmith, some Alesmith out here. Oh, yeah. So this, I'm, I'm uh, going to see if we maybe get this one. This one gets pretty popular around October. You, you put the old sniffer in the glass, and uh, it's, it's what you expect. It's malty. It's uh, a little bit of like a caramely smell. A little caramely. Yeah, like a, almost like a brown sugary. Uh, and the taste fall. I mean, if, if you're used to drinking Mertzens. This is that. It's not quite as thick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, it's not quite as thick, I would say. It's a little more crushable than your typical, uh, you know, traditional Meritzen, but um, all the, the flavors ABV are there. On this one? I believe it was five and a half. Okay. Uh, yes, 5.5 5 okay. on the dot. How would you say the carbonation is on that? You know, it's uh, right in the middle there. Not over carbonated, not under. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You get just yeah. enough, like, fizz. Yeah, just yeah, enough yeah. with every sip. Doesn't sit on the on the tongue too long. It makes you want a little more. So, good, good, good. Yes, uh, just in time for October. In fact, it's Oktoberfest starting like September. It does. Yeah, traditionally, I think in in Germany it starts in uh, September. September. Uh, September. <laughs> Drink enough and it becomes September. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so very good. Ale Smith or El Schmidt Oktoberfest. Um, all right, I teased it. Just a minute ago, we have a voicemail from the one and only Fontana Jim. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hey, Greg, need to change your outgoing message. It's from your former podcast. Anyways, I wanted to give uh, the Fontana Jim's breakdown of what life's simple pleasures are nowadays. And some mornings for you guys this did you guys get up there in age? You know, because I think uh, I might be a little older than some of you. I was in school when the uh, Berlin Wall came down. So there you go. So one of the things that is just fantastic, and you know, I don't know if it happens to everybody. It doesn't even happen to everybody my age. Maybe it's, maybe it's because I have a wicked fast uh, metabolism there. But I have a good, nice meal. You know, like a nice burrito, a California burrito like I had today out of Alpine, California, out of uh, Cholitos or whatever the hell that name is, that place next to McKinney's. You know, about an hour, hour later, I have a very fantastic bowel movement. It's, it's really quite pleasurable, as long as you can find a place to leave that deposit. <laughs> now, I gotta leave you with a cautionary note, because, uh... One of the things I have noticed as I've climbed up there and watched calendars come up well is, uh, you know, the hot sauce. I love the hot sauce. But me culo en fuego, let me tell ya. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, not so much. Maybe I should eat ice cream after I have the hot sauce. <laughs> Some of you guys who watch Cheech and Chong, you're gonna get that reference. Anyways, keep up the good work. Love hearing the podcast. Love hearing the uh, changes. That's a nice short format. Appreciate you guys and girls. Happy birthday! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fontana Jim. Oh, coming in hot, literally. Yeah. Coming, sounded, in, we're coming out hot. Pretty damn loaded. Yeah. I, I think I need that as a drop, me culo and fuego. Uh, that was great. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too detailed on here, but uh, I can relate. Oh. As I've gotten up there in age and what the hot sauce does to your innards. Yeah. I can relate a little bit. I've got a few years. Yeah. You're, you're a couple <laughs> years behind us. But he's down there in San Diego getting them California burritos. Oh. You ever had a California burrito? I French fries? No. Oh, my God. Flex? What? Probably not so much. I used to order french fries with my burrito at the local establishment because I wasn't a huge fan of rice and beans. Mm. But, but was it in your burrito? No, that's strange. Oh, okay. Life-changing moment here. <laughs> no, a that's California, strange. California burrito, asada, guacamole, or avocado, french fries in the tortilla. Cheese, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have cheese. Yeah. 
Oh, that's not. I've this, seen this like is a actually of fries. known as a California burrito. Yeah, it's a very San Diego thing. It's a California burrito. It's got French fries inside of it. I need that inside yeah. of me. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> <ew. laughs> I've only had a nickel. Oh. Uh, it is delicious. So bad for you. Oh man! And will result horrible. in exactly what he was talking about on his voicemail. Especially if you add hot sauce. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, worth it. You know, I'll just bring the Pepto. Yeah, bring the pink shit. You'll be good. I'm, I'm uh, going to go to the local spot now and just request them put French fries in my burrito. Yeah, make like, sure they just, do that. Just figure out a way to do it because I want to try this. Well, it's not hard. They just have the burrito open. <laughs> They take a handful of fries, they throw them in, they close up the burrito. Oh, yeah, but like, right. what are what are they taking out of the burrito to put the French fries? I in? think you take out take out the rice and beans, like you were saying. Okay, swap the starch for the starch. Yeah, right on, you right just on. do. Yeah, you just do your protein, your avocado or guac or whatever else you do, your cheese and your fries, and then if they have like special sauce, like shack sauce, 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 shack shack sauce is very local to us. It's like a uh, a hot sauce and ranch mixed together, basically, just so fucking good. I, yeah. I don't think I don't think I'm here for that. Oh, you would be. Come on out, my it's friend. It's really del- it's like a baja sauce, I guess, if you will. Yeah, but like I make good. baja sauce where I put tapatio, sour cream, a splash of mayonnaise, and garlic powder, and it's bomb on shrimp tacos. Just add some ranch powder to it. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I made my own shack sauce. This is getting so off topic. Where it was uh, sour cream, taco seasoning. Mm. And then ranch mix. Oh. And then I needed to thin it out with a little bit of like heavy cream because it's just a little too chunky. So I put a little cream in there and it really thinned it out. It was like almost exactly shack sauce. That sounds great. It's pretty baller. Flex is not here for that face is I don't want it. Don't diss it until you try it. Well, that's, a, I mean, I would try it. It just doesn't sound, I don't know, appealing to me. I think the ranch. Well, there's only, ugh. There's only Are, one way to find Do you not like out. ranch in general? Are you not I like, like ranch, ranch with vegetables. Like ranch with anything else, how people eat it with pizza or like oh, chicken nuggets or something so like that. I, I, I just chicken nuggets. I don't get it. Oh, flexible. Well, what what do you eat your chicken nuggets with? Barbecue sauce? Oh, for sure, ketchup? barbecue sauce. It's got to be like a spicy barbecue sauce. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, that's delicious, but so is ranch. Ah, can't, can't. I just can't. I well, won't. It's okay if you can't get behind it. It's fine. We still like you. New controversy, everybody. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. I feel like, the, you know, everybody, mo- the majority of people out there are like fans of ranch. I like my pizza crust in ranch. Like, I will eat pretty much the whole pizza without ranch, but when I get to the crust, I want to dip the crust in ranch. Because Top Top Toppers by our house <laughs> has the, the best, best ranch. Like, you could drink that shit with a straw. Yep. It is phenomenal. I'm just going to end this conversation with this. Pizza and nacho cheese is a game changer. <laughs> but no ranch? But no ranch. Okay. Nacho but like, cheese. Just just the crust or like you dip like You dip the pizza in the nacho uh, cheese and that you, you know what I'm talking about an ass blaster. You talk about your cool <laughs> yeah, on the fire. That, that sounds like it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's just maybe it's just the Wisconsin in me, but cheese all the way. Oh god, I feel bad for your plumbing after that one. <laughs> hey, we we regular over here. <laughs> <laughs> You might be, but that He's toilet like lactose service. intolerant who? <laughs> yeah. What? I, I got nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, your wife and kids might. Jesus. Yeah. Poor them. That's, <laughs> that's why I just fart in my sleep. Or fart and pretend <laughs> I'm sleeping. <laughs> and smile after? You always got to pretend you're sleeping. <laughs> you guys have all heard my fart and sleep story, right? I, I can't remember if I've said it on the show or not. I don't know. Quickly, I was uh, dating the wife. We'd only been together for like a few months at this point. It was one of the first times I stayed over at her house, and we were just hitting that point where it was like, I'm just hitting sleepy time, but I'm not like fully asleep, and one you know, kind of leaked out. <laughs> she goes, hey, hey, I, I think someone's calling you. She, that was my phone vibrating, <laughs> and I fucking ran with it. I was like, yeah. I even like got up, checked. I knew exactly what it was. I got up. I checked my phone. I was like, oh, just an email. We're fine. You know? <laughs> I totally sold it. That's awesome. I didn't tell her for like a year that it was really just me ripping ass in her apartment. So, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. That's love. Yeah, right there. So uh, this show is really taking a turn. <laughs> um, all right. What else? What else is going on here? Oh, good news to all you people that like just dropping massive amounts of money on beer. 
Sam Adams Utopias is back on October 11th for the low, low price of $240 a bottle. Nobody beer for it? No. no. They added cherries this year. That's their big thing. $240? It's 28%. I could get a bottle of Dom Perignon for $179 at Costco over the holidays. <laughs> and you want me to pay $240 for a beer? This I'm hasn't no, no, this dumb. hasn't always been like $240, correct? I believe you're right. I think it used to be like $150 or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, inflation. Was, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think it was in the hundreds. You know, uh, Deb, our friend Deb, one hop mess with no more. She's actually had it. Oh, wow. She could, Impressive. She could speak a little better to that. But uh, yeah, I think it was in the hundreds originally. Now it's up to 240. Cherries must be on short supply or something. Seriously. Uh, this is the story that Davis sent to us. It's so good. Missing drunk man accidentally joins search party to find himself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> in a recent and hilarious incident of intoxication, a man in Turkey decided to join a search party oh, oh, oh. for someone who had been reported missing. He, however, didn't realize that he was the missing person. <laughs> 50-year-old Behan Mutlu had been drinking with friends on Tuesday when he wandered into a nearby forest. When he didn't come back, his friends grew concerned and reported him missing to authorities. As news of the missing man spread, volunteers from different neighborhoods joined with authorities to aid in the rescue mission. Among them was Mutlu. Oh my God. Who appeared to not realize that the subject of the search was himself. The search party reportedly continued for hours with rescuers calling out Mutlu's name. (laughs) However, (laughs) it seems that it took Mutlu a while to register that pivotal piece of information. Eventually, at one point in the search, he suddenly announced his presence. (laughs) According to a a Turkish news channel, the search party suddenly heard a voice speak up and ask, Who are we looking for? (laughs) They answered, Mulu. (laughs) He replied, I am here. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, They noted that authorities then escorted Mulu to his home in the country's Versa province. It remains unknown exactly how uh, the bizarre situation came to fruition, and it's unclear why it took hours for Mutlu and the rest of the party to notice the mix-up. Ever gone looking for yourself? (laughs) I... no. Yeah. No. That is a a tremendous story. (laughs) Yeah. That was was so good. I I was just hoping that the guy didn't realize, like, it was himself until, like, a couple hours in, and then he just, like, kept going with it because he just kind of felt bad. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have, like, kind of, like, snaked out of it, like, oh, shit, this is me, and just kind of like, ah, I gotta go. Yeah, like, oh, find me at home, like. Yeah, had a burrito, gotta go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I totally would have ducked out. I wouldn't have, I would not have been like, wait, who are you? I gotta go. Oh, oh, shit. Uh, Then I wonder, that would have been great. What if he ducked out? And then they're like, fuck, the guy that was helping us look for Mootloo is gone, too. Now we gotta look for him. (laughs) Can you imagine? Oh, oh, looking for him twice. Well, I'm wondering like how fantastic. big the search party is too. Like, not one of those single people in the search party was like, "Oh, hey, it's Mulu." Like, well, like one of, and one his, of his friends were in it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, somebody had to have recognized that it was him, or maybe they were just going along with it. You would uh, maybe, maybe it was a big joke on authorities or something. Um, but this new story was the story that kept on giving because it continued. And it said, while fairly harmless, the incident calls into mind other recent situations in which intoxicated participants fared far worse. Earlier this month, for example, Donald Ricketts of Poseyville, Indiana, had allegedly been drinking when he crashed his vehicle into the side of a tractor trailer. However, when Ricketts' wife, Sherelle, came to retrieve him, she ended up making the same unfortunate mistake that he did. Oh Allegedly, God. also under the influence, she crashed her car into her husband's vehicle. Oh, my god! <laughs> that had already crashed. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was injured in either incident, but both cars were totaled. What idiots. <laughs> so nice. They got to do it twice. Exactly. I mean, oh, my God. Who does that? People in Indiana do. Oh, God. Were they drinking together beforehand? I'm confused. <laughs> Or were they like at, they just a couple of so, lushes. Wait, was she helping him evade? She she went to the scene to, because she had been told that he had gotten in an accident. So she showed up to, you know, be supportive or whatever and uh, was very supportive. Very supportive. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Good times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't drink and drive, everybody. No, do not. 
Then quickly, Stone Distribution has added Tarantula Hill, local brewery, to us. And Crowns and Hops, that new brewery in Inglewood that opened up uh, during the pandemic, actually. I've had a couple of their beers, and it's really good. I have not yet, I don't think. Unless maybe you've shared with me, and I just don't remember. Mm, I haven't had very many, so probably not. Um, I find them from time to time, if you're local to us, at Bottle and Pint. Okay. So anyways, uh, very cool news. If you're in California, be on the lookout for these breweries. Uh, and then, oh, more Whoa, lightning. Whoa, lightning was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, it, and just in case Flex needed more reasons to come out to California besides visiting our hot asses, uh, mm-hmm. Boston Beer is going to open a truly hard seltzer tap room in downtown <laughs> LA. Wait, what? Yeah. Apparently, the downtown LA will now have a truly hard seltzer tap room. Look for that coming 2022, everybody. All seltzer, all the time, downtown LA. Burr, 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 burr. Burr, 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 burr. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Who wants to hit up the truly all seltzer seltzer bar? Y'all out of beer. Apparently so. Oh. Yeah, like, what, just taps of any, like every single fruit in the world, but it's a seltzer. I guess. Just not on board. Yeah, there's, there's one place I won't be lining up for, so... Uh... Oh, come on out, Flex. The worst part about it is you know they're just going to fucking kill it. Probably. It's probably going to be by like the Staples Center or some shit, so mm-hmm. people will be like, oh, fuck it, whatever. It's not crowded in here. Right. 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 Let's just get some seltzers before we hit the game. How depressing would it be if they take over the old McKellar tap room, re- replace probably, it with you're seltzer? You're honestly probably right. Yeah. That's probably where it's going. It didn't say where, just as downtown LA. I'm like, oh, it's McKellar tap room. It's going to be right room. across from modern times, though. Yep. So, I mean. Yeah. Sorry, LA. Me too. Me too. Mm. Uh, that's everything. I think I'll hit a little music here. Uh, I'm going to say hi to Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. I'm surprised Flex didn't totally creep her out. Yeah, this time. You, you, you can't do it every time. You can't be 100%. Oh. <laughs> you know, you can't be 100% creep. So you got to be like 60% of a creep. Oh, I was going to say like 97, but all right. Yeah, 60% yeah, is good. Know, whatever. Find us at craftbeerrepublic.com and Craft Beer Republic on the socials. Find Flex at Flex Me a Beer with underscores in between. Find Coley at Ice Cole Beer with underscores after each one. And uh, 805 538 Beer is the number to call. Drunk dial us, leave us a voicemail, and mail at craftbeerrepublic.com. I think that is everything. Hope everyone's staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.